This video is dedicated to all the awakened souls who frequently visit the astral afterlife. Without you, this information would not be available. In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what to do to exit the reincarnation cycle. But first, if you don't know what the reincarnation cycle really is, please watch my video, Reincarnation is a Trap, The True Purpose of the Tunnel of Light. The link is in the description. So let's begin. Step 1. Know what you really are. When you take away this dense vessel we call the human body, what we are left with is pure awareness. We are simply a state of being aware. The state of awareness is a powerful creator god that originated directly from Source, the source of all creation, the real universe. We are all individual expressions of that divine consciousness. These entities work hard to make you forget how powerful you really are. Just look at everything they have to do to deceive you into thinking that you have no power. They do this because they know once humanity wakes up, it's game over for them. Declare your sovereignty. These entities use soul contracts to trap us. However, these contracts are almost always made deceptively, so oftentimes the person isn't even aware that they have a soul contract. Therefore, you must declare all soul contracts null and void. It is important to set the intention daily that no one can interfere with you upon bodily death. Make it very clear that you are sovereign. Try to assert this every day. Write, I am a sovereign being or whatever mantra that asserts your sovereignty that resonates with you the most. Write this down over and over again so it seeps deep into your subconscious. Another way for it to enter your subconscious is to tell yourself that you are sovereign first thing upon waking up or while you are falling asleep. This is when you are most suggestible. Visualize an impenetrable force field that surrounds you. Remember, your imagination is your power. No gods, no masters. It's extremely important to realize that no one is above you. No gods, no ascended masters, no spirit guides. You are the powerful creator god. This is a controversial step because it involves abandoned religions that have been instilled into many of us since birth. This is not to say that there are not crumbs of truth in each religion, but since most religions involve giving your power away to a higher being, or promote the idea of karma and needing to reincarnate until you quote-unquote get it right, they must be left behind. It also involves leaving the New Age idea of spirit guides behind as well for those who don't follow mainstream organized religion. Do not give your power away to anyone or anything. Develop a strong out-of-body awareness. It is absolutely necessary to develop a strong out-of-body awareness. You must familiarize yourself with the dreamlike state of the astral realms to avoid being manipulated. To do this, it is necessary to practice one of the following. Astral projection, lucid dreaming, or deep meditation. And this is so upon bodily death, you are fully aware of what is happening. Keep a dream journal and learn how to control your dreams. Upon waking, immediately write down your dreams before you forget them even if you only remember fragments. Learn how to astral project. Going into the astral realm and familiarizing yourself with it will allow you to see how easy it is for these entities to appear as beings of light. Visualize yourself being in other places in detail. Visualize yourself flying. Nurture your imagination. Most importantly, these practices will enable you to remain lucid at the time of bodily death. Which leads us to the next step. Conquer your fear. Fear is a common control tactic of the Matrix. It's how the system controls us. 
People give their power away because of fear, with fear of death being the biggest source of that fear. Remember, there is no death. The body has an expiration, but your soul has eternity. Please note this video does not advocate or support suicide in any way. I want to make that very clear. If you are struggling with these feelings, please reach out for help. Now back to the video. It's also important to remember when in the astral you might see things that may frighten you, which is why it's crucial to conquer that fear. Please don't let this information stop you from trying to astral project. Most experiences are beautiful and amazing. However, if you come into contact with an entity that tries to intimidate or scare you, you must show true courage. You need to realize you are more powerful than these energy vampires. Be brave and stand up to them. The only power they have is the power you give them in the form of fear. Remember, fear is a choice. Which leads us to the next step. Raise your vibration. Please note I will be using the words vibration and frequency interchangeably. Your natural state of being is that of pure love and happiness. If your vibration is too low, then you may find it difficult to navigate the lower astral realms. Remember, astral parasites feed off of your loose energy. There are many ways to raise your vibration. Here are some suggestions. Practice Qigong. Qigong helps circulate energy throughout your body and naturally raises your frequency. Meditate and practice mindfulness. You'll find you feel much more peaceful and full of joy. Laugh. Even if it feels forced at first, just start laughing. Spend time with your animal friends, especially cats. Cats naturally repel negative entities. Cats are also masters at astral projecting. Taking care of a cat will be mutually beneficial for the both of you. Not a big cat person? No worries. All domesticated furry friends will fill you with love and joy and lower stress levels. But please respect the sovereignty of wild animals that aren't used to being around humans. And always think about what is best for our animal friends. Limit your screen time. Humans weren't meant to be staring at a screen all day. Reduce the amount of time you spend watching TV or playing on your phone. You'll find that you'll be much happier overall. And these are just some suggestions, but there are so many ways to raise your vibration. If you guys are interested in a video on how to raise your vibration, let me know in the comments. Prepare for the love bomb. Upon leaving the body, the soul will feel pure, unconditional love and euphoria. The reason for this is unknown, however, it may be because the heart chakra is fully open at the time of death, or because this is our natural state of being. Another theory is this feeling is artificially induced by the Archons. Whatever the reason, in this state of pure bliss and love, the soul is easily manipulated. These parasitic entities take advantage of this feeling by luring you into their trap. Keep a level head, stay practical and logical, stand strong in your convictions, and immediately turn away from the entity and the false light tunnel. Remember, these beings have one goal, and one goal only, to get you into the tunnel of light. They will use every trick they have to get you to do so. Use your innate power as a creator being to teleport yourself out of there or force yourself back down to earth. If you find yourself being pulled towards the tunnel of light, do not move at all. Which brings us to our last step. Intention. Without the intention of not going into the light, none of this is possible. You must fully intend to be sovereign. You must fully intend not to reincarnate. You must fully intend not to follow any entities into the tunnel of light. So, set the intention right now that you will not be reincarnating and you will be the free soul that you were always meant to be. 
This seems self-evident, but it still needs to be said. Troubleshooting and Frequently Asked Questions In this section, I'm going to go over some frequently asked questions I've seen asked and any other issues or soul traps you may encounter. This information comes from researchers Robert Monroe, Wes Penray, and first-hand accounts of those who have astrally traveled to the astral afterlife. I will also be linking relevant reading materials in the description below. Can you go into more detail on what happens after you enter the false light tunnel, aka the tunnel of light? Once you enter the false light tunnel, you are in what is known as the astral afterlife. Upon entering the astral afterlife, you immediately go to a facility known as a processing center to be registered. From there, you are judged by a council, sometimes known as the Lords of Karma. This council is usually made up of human sellouts who serve the Archons. Please note that bodily death is different from near-death experiences. Since near-death experiences are propaganda for these entities in the false light tunnel, a softer approach is taken because they know the person will be going back. In these instances, guilt is a primary tool of manipulation. However, upon actual bodily death, the judgment is much more direct and the deceased human is openly judged by the council. The deceased human is still manipulated through guilt and lies about karma and karmic debt. However, they are much more forceful as they know the deceased human is not leaving. Once you are judged, you are allowed to roam the astral afterlife for a while before you are subjected to a brutal memory wipe and forced reincarnation. The astral afterlife has modern cities and towns just like we do here in this dimension, except it's far worse. The astral afterlife is a free-range slave farm and all deceased humans are subjected to brutal martial law. An astral traveler who ended up in a modern-looking city called John de Locke relayed the following experience. Please note this person was astral projecting and fully alive. However, those around him were deceased humans in the processing center. While in the processing center, he heard a bell ring loudly. A deceased woman started singing loudly, Satan is coming, Satan is coming. He could tell the woman was terrified and doing this to warn others. All the deceased humans immediately dropped to their knees with their faces submissively facing the ground. A recently deceased young man who was next to him was new to the processing center and the astral afterlife. The young man just stood there looking scared and confused, having no idea what was going on. A group of reptilians then walked in, and it became clear the deceased humans were obsequiously bowing to them. This experience is similar to an incident that researcher and pioneer in astral travel Robert Monroe had. Robert Monroe also described being in a modern-looking city during one of his travels in the astral realm. By his descriptions of the city, it is believed he was also in John de Locke. He recounted the following horrifying experience. While in the city, he heard loud trumpets start playing, and immediately everyone around him lay face down on the ground with their shirts pulled up, exposing their torsos. A group of reptilians then entered the area. He was describing the astral afterlife. In both accounts, reptilians had entered the area and humans submissively bowed to them. The Soul Net, aka Frequency Fence According to the West Penry papers, there is a soul net or frequency fence that keeps souls from leaving the Matrix. This grid around the planet is designed to keep souls who don't go into the Tunnel of Light from leaving. Certain awakened individuals have been able to put holes in the frequency fence, making it possible to escape through these holes. However, these holes are constantly being repaired, so finding them can be tricky. I can do a whole video on the soul net theory if you guys are interested, just let me know in the comments. So, if I don't go into the tunnel of light, where do I end up? You have different options. 
You can force yourself back down to Earth and stay as a free-range ghost. However, you will still be in the simulated universe slash matrix system. As a free-range ghost, you can stay on Earth if you choose, or you can look for the holes in the frequency fence, aka soul net, and escape through one of these holes. Wes Penray postulated that escaping through one of these holes leads to the real universe, where we are all originally from. The Mist and the Stairway to Heaven This is another soul trap. Those who experience traumatic deaths, or those who have no out-of-body awareness, end up, quote-unquote, waking up on a stone slab in a foggy area known as the mist. These souls are lost and confused to where they are. They wander around aimlessly and eventually see a stairway. This stairway leads to the astral afterlife, just like the tunnel of light leads to the astral afterlife. They are just two different ways souls end up there. Please note, not all of those with no out-of-body awareness end up in the mist. Sometimes they may just wake up from being unconscious and see the tunnel of light right in front of them. It is unknown why some deceased humans end up in the mist, while others don't. The Void You may find yourself in a place of complete darkness. Don't be afraid. You are in the void. The void is a place of only awareness. It can be a beautiful, peaceful experience, or it can be a hellish one. It all depends on you. Remember, you are a powerful creator being, so you create what is around you. Here, your surroundings are simply a reflection of you and your beliefs. However, if you see a pin of light that is approaching you in the distance, turn away. This is a tunnel of light. I died and saw and experienced nothingness. There are some people who have died and been revived, only to say that there was nothing. They had no awareness. They didn't even know that they had died until they were revived. And death was like being unconscious. This is not to be confused with the void where there is just darkness, but the person is still aware. The people who experience this quote-unquote lights-out scenario have not had their silver cords detached at the time of death. The silver cord is what connects the soul to the body. If the silver cord is still attached to the body at the time of death, the person will still be unconscious until they wake up on a stone slab in the mist. This occurs when people have no awareness outside the body. This is why it's extremely important to learn astral projection or lucid dreaming. All of the steps that I've outlined are important, but in my opinion, the two most important steps are developing a strong out-of-body awareness and intention. This is because even people with knowledge of the tunnel of light can be unconscious after bodily death if they have no out-of-body awareness. When they wake up from being unconscious, they may see the tunnel of light right in front of them, but by then it will be too late and they will get sucked in. This information is not to scare anyone, but rather to stress the importance of developing a strong awareness outside the body. Why do some people remember their past lives? According to Professor Ian Stevenson, a few people, mostly young children, remember their past lives. These children usually end up forgetting these past lives as they grow older, usually completely forgetting everything around the time they turn 10 years old, oftentimes even younger. From what I've found, when this happens, it's usually because a memory wipe didn't fully wipe their memories. There are also a few adults who can recall their past lives as well, however, this is rare. For the adults who still remember, this is usually because in their most recent past life, they negotiated with the lords of karma or some false light being to allow them to remember in their next life. However, the person only remembers bits and pieces of their past life, or the past life comes to them only in their dreams. The Forever Conscious Research channel covers such accounts on his channel, which I will link below in the description. What about the Law of Three? The Law of Three is a spiritual, quote-unquote, law promoted by the New Age community that states if you ask a higher being the same question three times, then they must answer truthfully.
However, this law makes the assumption that the entity you are communicating with is a higher being to begin with, when in reality there is no way of knowing. As previously mentioned, it's very easy for entities to masquerade as beings of light. In fact, many higher beings do not exist in the astral realms as their frequency is too high, and therefore the chances that you're communicating with a higher being is quite slim. There is nothing stopping the entity from lying. Isn't this just achieving enlightenment through samadhi, i.e. going beyond the cycle of life and death? In a way, yes. However, there is no particular path that one must follow in order to achieve this. You only need to realize what you truly are, which is infinite consciousness, and that your natural state of being is enlightenment. Once you recognize this and have knowledge of these soul traps, will you be able to avoid them? Ignorance of these soul traps is what keeps humans in the reincarnation cycle. It doesn't matter how well you lived your life, you could have been a literal monk. However, if you enter the Tunnel of Light or any of these other soul traps, you will be forced to reincarnate. This is because the reincarnation cycle is a scam and its only purpose is to keep humans enslaved and feed in parasitic entities. You aren't meant to escape. The game is rigged. Therefore, you don't escape by playing the game. Only when you realize this will you be able to escape the reincarnation cycle. This isn't to say that you shouldn't lead a kind life. You should strive to be the best version of yourself as possible. Be of service to others, be compassionate, and give love freely. However, remember that people continue to reincarnate because of ignorance of the true nature of the Tunnel of Light and reincarnation not because they didn't live their life a certain way or because they didn't reach what certain teachings consider enlightenment. Also remember, humans are flawed and we all make mistakes. You don't have to be perfect or lead a quote-unquote perfect life to exit the reincarnation cycle. You only need knowledge of what you truly are and what reincarnation really is. What I call consciousness is like the ocean. Whereas mind, it's the same substance, but it is far more limited. Like ice is the same substance as water, but it's in a completely different and more limited state. And, you know, when you look at the, the, the oceans, they say it's the South China Sea. They say it's the South Atlantic, the Indian Ocean, the North Atlantic. Same bloody water. But what we do is we give our water, our infinite self names, like Ethel Jones and Arthur Smith. And we give them um, identities without realizing that we are just points of attention within one infinite, eternal consciousness. We are expressing our point of attention as a uniqueness, which is wonderful. A unique personality, a unique person, a unique perspective, a unique point of attention. But at that time, we are connected to all the other points of attention in infinite awareness, which in the end are all us and we are all them. And so, when we go to war, we go to conflict, we are fighting ourselves. The ocean is the droplet, the droplet is the ocean. Drop the droplet in the ocean, where does the droplet end and the ocean start? The idea of the conspiracy is to keep that droplet disconnected from the ocean. And when they do that, we have the world that we live in. If you don't become the ocean. You'll be seasick all your life. And so many people feel this, this ache, this, this sense of disconnection, this sense of longing that they can't put words to because one part of them, one, one level of them knows that we're all one. Everything is all one. It's an ocean. We are a point of attention, but we are the ocean. My God, that's what's what we are. We're the freaking ocean of infinite consciousness. What a job they've done to persuade us we're Ethel from the store. Near death experiences, the common themes of what they say is incredible. How they leave the body and some, so, suddenly past, present and future are all happening at the same time, in the same moment. How they have multiple levels of awareness at the same time. In the body they had one level of awareness. Because the body focuses 
us in these frequencies, locks us in like a computer. The fear of death comes from the ignorance of life. And a final word. Whatever you seek, you shall find. Ask to be infused with knowledge and truth, and you shall be led to it. You only need to be open to receiving it. The truth may not always be what you want to hear, but it will always set you free. Well, that's all for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Remember to assert your sovereignty, use discernment, and always seek the truth, no matter where it leads.